Hey guys, uh, for this video I'll just be showing you how to do some fairly basic uh, spline modeling within 3ds Max. Uh, so spline modeling is perfect for objects like this, where you just have like a simple outer profile that you want to use the lathe modifier on. Uh, so for this uh, scenario we'll be recreating this lamp, this ceiling light. So just come over to these options on the far right, and uh, select that line option. I'll quickly just get this into place so we can use it as a reference. Alright, and so splines are quite easy uh, to model with. They're quite simple. If you've used programs like Illustrator and whatnot, it might feel quite intuitive. So uh, you can see the button presses that I'm using at the bottom of the screen, uh, but for the most part, so left shift will allow you to uh, create a straight line, and holding left shift and uh, your left click will allow you to create a bend or a curve within that spline. So we'll just quickly put this here, line it up. Yep. And we're going to place this, uh, create that little divot. Now we'll draw out that straight line wire, holding down the left shift key. Create one more divot, holding down left click and shift to create that bend. Uh, and then continuing that line here, and then actually we won't need that extra bit because we want this to be hollow, so we'll just quickly delete that. Perfect, so that's your basic profile. We'll, um, we'll quickly just move this around to make it slightly closer. And you'll notice that when you drag these lines, you have this these two green dots, as well as these options when you right-click on uh, the vertexes, where you're able to then change the shape. It's also worth noting that um, in order to select the vertexes, just press 1 on your keyboard, and you'll access the vertex options. 2 will access the edges, and 3 will let you select the entire spline. So that's a quick way to model. So we'll just get this a little bit more accurate, and then I'll show you the next step. Alright, so for the next step we'll be using the fillet command, so we'll just press 1 on our keyboard, and we'll select those vertexes. Uh, we'll then scroll down the modifier section here, until we find the fillet command, and click on that, and you can either drag, or you can scroll, or you can uh, drag up that slider next to the fillet command. But you'll notice that doing this creates unnecessary vertexes. So that's where the weld command comes in. So we don't want to keep this extra vertex, we want it to be fused. So where is the weld command? Let me find it. Oh. Right, perfect, so it's right here. Just underneath the, uh, the modifier sections when your vertexes are selected. So just increase the, uh, the weld threshold. Uh, so, yeah, oh. yep, so just bump that up and then select both the vertexes and uh, click weld and there you go, so they become one. So it's a really quick way of uh, fixing your geometry. And now we'll just continue these fillet commands. Right, so we'll do the exact same thing on this section here. We'll just drag that in there and then we'll just weld those two unnecessary vertexes together to turn them into one. Alright, uh, yeah, this feels a little bit weird here, so we'll just drag this up, and that should correct that, perfect. Alright, so you'll see there that the fillet command continues for this the section of the actual uh, light itself, or the lamp. We'll fillet that, we'll weld those two vertexes. And now we're, for the most part, finished. Um, we'll, we'll work on fixing this up, but the next step really is to add the lathe modifier. So you can see here that it's completely broken initially. Um, but if you click this drop down arrow next to lathe, click on the axis, you're then able to move the axis itself, and uh, we're able to get it exactly how we need it. This won't always work, you might have to fiddle with the settings below, but for the most part moving the axis is, is a safe bet. Perfect. 
But you will notice though that um, despite the lathe command, there's still no thickness. There's still no um, the lamp itself is still not a solid. It's just like a surface that's been wrapped around. Uh, so in order to add thickness, we're going to use a command called shell, which will just go in above the lathe. Alright, so we'll just type in shell up here. Perfect. Alright, so you can see we have thickness now. We don't want uh, outer thickness, we don't want inner thickness though, sorry. No, sorry, we want inner thickness, we don't want outer thickness. So, perfect. Well, uh, about there, yep. But you'll notice that it's still quite blocky. Um, the edges are quite harsh. There isn't. So the next command that we'll be using is Turbo Smooth, and so this just uh, fills in those uh, those edges, and it creates a much smoother profile of the object. Uh, and the great thing about 3ds Max is that you're always able to go backwards, so you can undo any of these commands that we've just done. But there you go. So you'll notice that it's still not quite right. So I'll just spend a bit of time now using the uh, techniques we just went over to fix up this light and try and get it closer to uh, the original light. So we want this edge to be a bit harsher. So we're going to just uh, use the corner command on it and then we're going to use the bezier command uh, down here. And this will create a harsher uh, edge. So we're just going to bring this down and this into the middle here. Uh, <laughs> I think we've gone in the wrong direction now. Perfect. Yep, so now we'll just bring that top section down and it should be about right. We'll bring this bottom section up actually, sorry, that'll be... Yeah, perfect. And we'll just bring that top section in slightly and drag it down. Uh, because we've made that edge a corner, we're going to have to add a new vertex. And you can do this quite easily with the refine command. Um, just when you've got your the vertexes selected. Yep, so click on that. So press 2 on your keyboard, click on that line, and then click refine. Uh, in one of the options down here, you might have to look. Where is it? Yep, so right here, just underneath the geometry tab, add that line, and now we can turn that into a Bezier if we haven't already. Uh, it already is, and drag that down, and you can see it's much closer to the uh, original light. Alright, perfect. Now if we go back to Turbo Smooth, yep, just about spot on. Alright, I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you.